The Trail, Chapter 40. We face off behind the farmhouse. Sadie draws a line in the dirt with her toe and tells me to stand behind it. She counts 10 paces, scuffs out a center mark, counts 10 more paces. She draws another line in the dirt with her toe and Lewis swaggers over to it. Sadie gently takes Moose by the collar and leads him to the scuffed out center mark. When I count to three, I'm going to let go. Both of you do what you think you've got to do to get this dog behind your line. No moving one toe over your line. Ready? One, two, three. I can do this. I crouch down and lay my elbows against my knees. Here, Moose. Here, boy. On the other end, Lewis's voice booms out. Buster, get your mangy butt over here. Moose looks back and forth between us. His tail thumps the ground uncertainly. Buster, Lewis stomps his foot on the ground. Moose plasters his ears against his side, his, against his head and whines. Lewis jerks his finger down, and points toward the dirt beside him. Now, he fixes Moose with a stare so vile, so full of anger and hate. Moose's legs buckle, leaving him cowering on the ground. I thought this would be easy, but now I'm starting to realize how powerful fear is. What if Moose is so scared of Lewis that he won't disobey him? I hadn't truly thought that Moose might go anywhere but straight to me. I'm not giving up though. Hey Moose, hey. My voice is nowhere near as powerful as Lewis or commanding. I clap my hands trying to distract Moose from Lewis's hypnotizing glare. One of Moose's ears perks up as if he can hear me but from an ocean away. You scruffy flea written mutt, screams Lewis. If you don't get yourself over here right now, you're gonna wish you never were, you were never born. Moose whines. He hears the venom in Lewis's voice and the promise of violence. He starts to slink toward Lewis. That's what I thought, you ugly cur. Come on. Lewis pushes his hand out. Moose, no. I'm about to lose everything, all of my promises, all of my hope. I start to take a step forward. Get back behind that line, you filthy maggot. Moose's fingernails are inches from Moose's collar. He glares at me. He's no longer looking at Moose. My foot hovers an inch from the line. Back, Lewis bellows. I step back and whistle. Moose. Free of Lewis's gaze, perks up his ears and swings his head toward me. I can see the white of his eyes. Moose, I say. Moose, buddy, listen to me. You don't belong here. This isn't your home. I'm your home. My voice cracks. Hey, Moose. Hey, I love you. Moose turns. He straightens up and starts to move back toward me. And my heart soars. And then Lewis makes a grab for him. Moose swerves and dodges, avoiding Lewis's big hand hands and in a few hobbled bounds, he's over to me and I've got my arms around his neck and my face buried in his fur. Good moose, I say, good dog. He chose Toby, Sadie shouts, deal's a deal. Lewis doesn't answer. He turns toward the farmhouse and even though I wanna believe he's going to be true to his word and will let me and Moose and Sadie go, I know that he's going for his shotgun. I pick up Moose, run. I tell Sadie, we flee past the house and down the dirt road. Moose is heavy in my arms, but it doesn't stop me from running faster than I ever have in my life. I hear cursing behind me, foul words that singe my ears like flamethrowers. I look back. Lewis is on his front porch, the shotgun stock braced against his hip. He pumps it twice. I tackle Sadie and we both go down. I arc sideways keeping Moose from hitting the ground as my shoulder absorbs the impact. Lewis fires the gun. There's a roar and dirt kicks up 20 feet from us. Give me back my dog, he screams. He throws his gun down and starts towards us. Sadie pulls me up. Come on. Adrenaline explodes through my veins. My shoulders arch. My shoulder aches, but I barely feel it. I focus on the road. My breath is even, my legs are moving like pistons. The endurance and strength I've built over the weeks on the trail steady me as I race forward. 
a 20 pound dog clutching, clutched in my arms. We make it to the four wheeler. Lewis is 30 yards behind us, but closing fast. Sadie yanks on the starter rope and the engine sputters and dies. Sadie yanks again. The motor catches and rumbles to life. She hurdles onto the seat. Get on, she yells. Lewis has 10 yards before he is on us. I swing behind Sadie, one hand around her waist and the other wrapped around Moose. Sadie throws the four-wheeler into the first, into first and slams on the gas as Lewis reaches us. I glance behind me and see a meaty hand slam onto my tied down pack. Faster, I yell as Sadie switches into second. I look back, hand over hand, Lewis is climbing over my pack and onto the four-wheeler. There's no time to think. I let go of Sadie, twist around, and unhook the bungee cord, keeping my pack in place. The cords whip through the rack and suddenly they're free and tumbling off the four-wheeler along with my pack and Lewis. Sadie hits third and my heart begins to slow as Moose's former owner fades into the distance. I let out a wild scream of victory. I've got my dog back. As I ride along the bumpy road, I glance down at this dog. I think about Lucas and the trail and promises the ones that were meant to be kept and the ones that turned into other promises. It's not about finishing the trail. It's about finding what's important in life, and fighting for it. It's about friendship and adventure, and realizing how strong you can be. Back at Sadie's house, I use her phone. I dial a number I know by heart. Hello? Hi, Grant. My voice nearly breaks. I'm ready to come home. After I hang up the phone, there's one more thing I have to do. I fumble in my pocket and pull it out. The weather beaten and beyond crumpled, but the words are still so clear. Almost all of them are crossed out. There's a cup full of pens in the kitchen counter. I take one and go outside with Moose. Together we walk until the woods surround us, where all I can see are trees and their summer green leaves and the unmarked ground ahead of me. Unlike the Appalachian Trail, there is no path to follow. No white blazes to show me the way. I take the list and rest it on the bark of the old oak tree. The tip of the pen touches number 10, and I draw one long, unbroken line. It's time to make my own trail. Ooh, that was the end. Let's see, acknowledgments. A huge thank you to my editor, Emily Safey, who brought this book to life with her keen eye and unflinching red pen. Toby's so story is so much richer because of you. Thanks to Beth Wyke and Anna Sisko for providing Appalachian Trail maps for me to pour over and mark Toby's journey day by day. When I needed to do firsthand research, Emily Halls was my stalwart hiking and backpacking partner. Thank you for carrying the heavy tent and that pesky one pound jar of peanut butter through the mountain adventures. Finally, a quiet, bone-deep thank you to my father, Toshio Hashimoto. You gave me the gift of the mountains, a gift for which I will be ever grateful. Mika Hashimoto grew up on a mountain in Maine. She's traveled the world in search of calm forests, beautiful peaks, and found them aplenty. When she's not hiking and climbing, she is a children's book editor in New York. And I believe she is a writer for Epic Books. And if we check out the inside cover of this book, there's actually a map of Toby's journey. Got all of his adventures along the way. And if we flip to the back, there is the other half of the map in that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the trail by Mika Hashimoto.